Hey guys, I have a really terrific non-fiction book to share with you today. Uh, if you remember, we've talked about the difference between fiction and non-fiction. A fiction book or story is one that has been made up. Think of like The Three Little Pigs or The Pigeon Drives the Bus. This is more of a non this is a non-fiction book. It's full of information. It's about real things. This is called A Seed is the Start by Melissa Stewart. And I love this because I love learning about how things grow. And that's what this book is all about. A seed is the start. So just to heads up, it starts off right in the front with words to know. So we're gonna just go over these quick so that as we're reading the story, we already know what we're talking about here. Now, one of those, I know you all know what this is. A berry is a small, round, brightly colored fruit. It usually has many seeds. And you can see that every time you look at a strawberry, it's covered with its seeds all around the outside. The second word we want to know is a burr. Take a look at that thing. Looks almost like a sea urchin, doesn't it? A rough, prickly covering that surrounds some seeds or fruit. These burrs, you don't want to get those caught on your sweater or your clothing. It stays forever. Now, fruit. You know what a fruit is. The fruit is a part of a plant that holds the seed. The next one is a nut. A nut is actually a fruit with a hard shell. Now, most nuts have just one seed. Now, the seed that we're talking about all of this, the seed is a part of a plant that can grow into a new plant, and it forms inside a fruit. You can see that pomegranate right there. And then the last one we want to remember is a seed pod. Now, a seed pod is a fruit that holds many seeds. When it is ripe, it spills open, and it releases the seeds inside. Take a look at this. So... A seed is the start of a new plant life. Bury it in soil and watch it grow, grow, grow. So what happens when you plant a corn seed? Take a look here. First, the seed coat splits open. So that's the part around the seed. Then a root pushes down into the soil. It soaks up water and minerals that are in the soil. Next, a shoot pokes up out of the soil. The shoot stretches towards the sun. The corn plant's first leaves spread open. They collect sunlight so the plant can make food and keep on growing. Did you know plants grow best when they have their own space? That's why seeds have so many ways to, of traveling to new places. Now, when a seed sprouts under a parent plant, it may have trouble growing. The young plant may not get enough sunlight to make food. So odds are, being that close to that big tree, that this pine tree is not going to grow too well. Now, when many speed, speed seeds sprout close together, young plants struggle to survive because they may not get the water and minerals that they need, so they travel. Now, some seeds fly. Now, dozens of seeds form inside a milkweed seed pod. We grow that at school. When the seeds are full grown, the pod bursts open and then the wind whisks the seeds away. Have you ever seen those fly? Now, do you wanna know how they fly through the air? Each seed has dozens of light, silky hairs. The wind lifts up the hairs and it lifts them higher and higher and higher and it carries the seed through the sky. Now, each dandelion seed grows inside a hard brown nut. See here? The nut's long stem is attached to a clump of silky hairs and the wind can blow a dandelion seed up to 500 miles away. It'd be like if we blew a seed here, it would go past Florida. Listen. <laughs> now, seeds also spin and glide. Take a look at this one. When this red maple fruit is ripe, its stem will break. The fruit will spin and spin like the blades of a helicopter, and it may travel the length of, get this, two football fields. After the fruit lands, its tough coat slowly breaks down. Then its two seeds can grow into new trees. Look at these Asian climbing gourds. These fruits are the size of basketballs. They grow on vines in the rainforest of Southeast Asia. And when a gourd cracks open, hundreds of these seeds take flight. They glide through the trees. After a seed lands, its wings slowly rot away and then a new vine sprouts. That is so neat. Seeds tumble and spill. 
As the Russian thistle's fruits grow, the plant dries out. Its leaves turn brown, and then its stem breaks away from the root. Now, when the wind blows, the plant rolls across the land. People call it a tumbleweed. A tumbling tumbleweed carries its 250,000 seeds far and wide. Now here, when a poppy blooms, a small round fruit forms inside the flower. After the petals fall away, the fruit grows larger, and then it dries out. When the stem sways in the wind, seeds spill out of the holes at the top of the dried poppy fruit. If they land in a dark, damp soil, they will grow into new plants. And if they land near a Starbucks, they will cover your bagel. <laughs> seeds splash. Now, look, marsh marigolds grow near ponds and streams, swamps, and marshes. Oh, how pretty next to that waterfall. After they bloom, seeds, seed pods form. When the seeds are ready, the pods split open. During summer storms, raindrops strike the seeds and knock them into the water. The seeds float to a new place. Living stones grow in dry, sandy deserts. It's easy to mistake them for rocks until their flowers bloom. When the seed pods are ripe, they wait for rain. And when the rain finally falls, raindrops splash the seed pods. And pop, the seed pods burst open. Water surges over the seeds and washes them away. Seeds float. Have you seen yellow irises growing in gardens? A lot of people love these flowers. But irises grow naturally in wet places, like this lake in British Columbia, Canada. After an iris flower withers away, a seed pod forms. When it's ripe, it breaks open. The seeds drop into the water and float away. Now, imagine a snowstorm of seeds. That's what it looks like when hundreds of cottonwood fruits split open at the same time. Cottonwood trees grow near rivers and lakes. Their tiny, fluff-covered seeds land on the water and travel to new places. No, seeds drift. Get this. This is called a red hamburger bean. <laughs> The red hamburger bean vine grows in the rainforests of Central and South America. When the seed pods are ripe, they split open. Two one-inch seeds fall out. Now, you want to know how did the red hamburger bean vine get its name? From the look of its seeds. When the rain falls, the seeds are washed into streams and rivers. They're swept into the ocean and can drift for thousands of miles. Now, People plant coconut palms in all kinds of places, but they grow naturally on warm, sandy beaches. Each coconut fruit has one seed inside. When the fruit is ripe, it falls down, down, down. It might land in the ocean, or it might hit the ground and then roll into the sea. Air pockets inside a coconut fruit help it to stay afloat. It can drift on the currents for days, or weeks, or months. The seed inside the coconut fruit, shown here, started to sprout during its journey. Seeds pop. Look at these lovely flowers. You will never guess how a Himalayan balsam sends its seeds into the world. All right. When a breeze blows or an animal passes by, pop, the seeds burst out in every direction. They may blast up to 15 feet away. A sandbox tree fruit looks like a small pumpkin, but when the fruit is ripe, it explodes into thin pieces. Bang! The sound rings out throughout the rainforest. Each piece contains a large flat seed. It blasts through the air at speeds of 150 miles an hour. The seeds may travel the length of seven school buses parked end to end. That is so long. Uh, did you know that seeds hop and creep? Wild oat plants often pop up in wheat fields. Why do their seeds have a long bent tail? So that they can move away from their parent plant. See how part of the seed's tail is twisted? As it winds and unwinds, pressure builds up along the straight tip. 
Finally, the tip springs forward and the seed jumps. Over time, it hop, hop, hops across the ground. Now look at these lovely blue cornflowers. As their petals dry out, fruits form inside the flower. Then the fruits fall to the ground. Each fruit has a seat, seed at one end. There's a tuft of stiff bristles at the other end. When the air is dry, the bristles shrink. On humid days, the bristles swell. Thanks to these tiny movements, the seed slowly creeps across the ground. Seeds hook and cling. See how the bulging green fruit below this burdock's pink flower, see that right there? It is surrounded by a spiky covering called a burr. Remember that word? After the flower fades, the fruit dries out, and its burr turns brown. Now, a burr has lots of tiny hooks, and when an animal passes by, the hooks get caught in its fur. Then the animal carries the fruit to a new place. When the fruit falls to the ground, it splits open. Then, seeds spill onto the ground. Oh, I love this. Green ants lace grows in fields and along roads. As its fruit ripens, they curl up to form a ball. Each fruit has two seeds on the inside. It has dozens of sticky spines on the outside. When an animal passes by, the fruits cling to its coat. The animal may carry the seeds for miles. Ah, uh, yes. Seeds ride inside. This bird, called a field fair, can't resist eating a tasty rowan berry. As it flies from place to place, the seeds ride inside its body until the bird poops. Then the seeds land in a new spot. Now, because berries are small, a deer doesn't have to chew them. Look at that. This means the seeds stay safe as they pass through the animal's body. A few days later, the deer poops out the seeds far away from the parent plant. Now, in many warm parts of the world, many, many, many bats eat fruit. Their bodies break down the soft, sweet pulp, but not the hard, tough seeds. Each time the bats poop, they spread the seeds to a new place. Now, seeds ride on the outside, too. Now, when ants find a bloodroot seed, they don't eat it. They pick it up and take it for a ride. Where are they headed? Back to their nest. The ants share the tasty food packet on top of the seed. Then they dump the seed in their waste pile. That's good news for the seed. It's surrounded by rich soil full of rotting material. What a perfect place for a plant to grow. In the autumn, gray squirrels collect hundreds of nuts and seeds. They carry the food to safe spots. Then they bury it. During the winter, squirrels eat some of the nuts and seeds, but they forget about others. In the spring, those leftover seeds sprout and they grow into new plants. Some people collect the seeds of plants they like. They take seeds home and grow them in their yard. Other people buy packets of seeds at a store. Then they plant the seeds in a garden. If a seed lands in a good spot, it sprouts. So look, when the apple seed sprouts, the tiny new plant stretches toward the sun. As time passes, the plant grows larger and larger. Now it looks like a young tree. Then it grows into a plant that makes more seeds. So when the tree is old enough, it begins to produce flowers. Then fruits develop with new seeds inside. So an apple tree can produce hundreds of apples every year. And each apple can have up to 10 seeds. How many seeds can an apple tree make in just one year? Thousands. That is so neat. Do you have any seeds? Are you collecting any? Growing any? I'd love to hear about it. Take care.